Since 2020, I've filmed over 200 Discount Dentist episodes, and the videos have changed quite a bit since the first one. When I originally started, I was living in a tiny one-bedroom apartment in Georgia, and I would lay a blue towel on the edge of my bed and film dental procedures on my cell phone. Since then, I've moved across the country where I now live in Salt Lake City, Utah, where I've set up a fully functioning operating room, and I frequently get asked how much my medical gear is actually real, and what are my most favorite props that I've used in my videos. So I'm making this video to show you guys what my top 10 emergency surgery film props are. Number 10 on my list is the popular fake cigarettes that have showed up on my channel in various projects that I've worked on over the years. The first time a production assistant handed me a pack of Honey Rose Herbal cigarettes was when I was working on the 2016 feature film Brigsby Bear, where I was playing a prison guard, and that was the first time that I knew that prop cigarettes even existed. Prior to that moment, I'd always wondered how actors handle filming a lengthy chain smoking scene, which means lighting up cigarette after cigarette back to back. Many people don't realize that a three to five minute scene in a movie or on television can actually take a full 12 to 14 hour day of filming or longer. When we consider how addicting nicotine is, and that actors in TV shows like Shameless or Chain Smoking Nonstop, we can only wonder how the actors don't quickly get addicted to this habit. Honey Rose Herbal Smokes is the answer, and that's why I chose to use these in my YouTube series Invisible River instead of real cigarettes. After making a couple videos about these herbal film props, I've received tens of thousands of questions asking for more information and how these work. It started when viewers saw my cellmate hand me a cigarette in episode 110 of the Discount Dentist series while my character was in prison, and I started getting asked if I smoke in real life. Since then, I've been making follow-up videos explaining that I don't smoke and how these actually work. Honey Rose Herbal Smokes contain no nicotine, tobacco or addictive chemicals, which is why they're trusted by your favorite TV shows like Shameless, Stranger Things, Mindhunter, Peaky Blinders, The Queen's Gambit, and many more. Anyone who's quit smoking knows how challenging it can be to get through the withdrawals. A huge part of riding out each craving wave is getting over the oral fixation that occurs as a result of the hand-to-mouth motion that happens while smoking. Honey Rose creates both unflavored and a wide variety of flavored cigarettes, including chocolate, vanilla, menthol, strawberry, ginseng, clove, and more. Since Honey Rose is the leading brand of herbal cigarettes for movies, TV shows, and theater production sets around the world, they develop their white line products, which have no brand or logos. They're made exclusively for the entertainment industry and are the number one choice for prop masters and actors. The Honey Rose White brand are completely white, including the filter, and are great for period-specific production set in the early 20th century. The White 100 smokes offer the same look, but are even longer at 100 millimeters. The White Cork smokes, also 84 millimeters long, give a very universal traditional look with the brown cork filter tip. Like the White brands, the White Corks also come in 100 millimeters with no logo or brand. Honey Rose also created the completely filterless smokes in response to demand from the film industry. These completely white cigarette sticks give filmmakers more flexibility and come in 84, 73, and 64 millimeters. Unlike vapes, Honey Rose Herbal Smokes were not created as a long-term replacement. They're designed for people who are already smoking but are ready to kick the habit. They're also the leading choice for actors who would otherwise go through many packs of cigarettes on set but would prefer not to inhale any nicotine or tobacco. Inhaling smoke is never ideal, but these provide a temporary solution for people who are struggling with the oral fixation and addiction to the hand-to-mouth movement from smoking. If you or someone you know is ready to quit smoking or you're a filmmaker or actor who prefers not to inhale any nicotine or tobacco, visit the link in the description of this video below. On the Honey Rose website, you'll also find charts related to their stop smoking plan, which evaluates how many cigarettes you smoke a day and then guides you through the quitting process. Visit the link in the description below to find out why Honey Rose has been the leading manufacturer of herbal smoke since 1910. Number nine on my list is the dental lamp that I introduced in episode 223 when my patient Mrs. Kiwi was having her staples removed. Long before I performed any emergency surgery, the Discount Dentist series actually originated with me putting teeth on fruits and vegetables and performing dental and orthodontic procedures on them. Some of my more popular videos were the Every Dentist Ever episodes where I make fun of some of the things that dentists and orthodontists do, like asking how your day is going and then shoving tools in your mouth while spraying water and jamming a suction tube down your throat. I incorporated as many of my familiar and relatable dentist memories as I could into these videos, such as bleeding gums while flossing, x-rays, dental bibs, having a cavity filled, but I always felt like something was missing. I realized one of the most familiar memories of visiting the dentist is having them put sunglasses on you while shining a bright light in your face. I also realized as I built my surgical chamber that I I had no overhead lighting, which is a staple in every operating room picture I looked at online. So I finally ordered this dental lamp on eBay and I figured I could easily clamp it to a C-stand and just hang it over my operating table. Unfortunately, it ended up being way heavier than I expected, so that didn't work out. I had the dental lamp just sitting around for a while until a friend offered to give me a hand mounting into the ceiling. After a quick trip to Lowe's, I figured it would be a breeze to set it up, but it turned into quite the project once we realized we couldn't find the ceiling joints. That's how much pressure I'm gonna put on it. Yeah. Fine. We just got back from Lowe's where we bought some batteries for the stud finder and some screws. So now all we have to do is find the ceiling joists and mount it to the ceiling. Sixteen inches. We're moving the stud finder along the ceiling and we can't find any ceiling joists. I thought this was gonna be a really fast, easy process, but if we can't find the ceiling joists, then I don't know what we can safely mount it to.
My concern is if we hang the dental lamp straight from the sheetrock, it's just gonna fall off on the ceiling. I'm starting to feel really confused because we've ran the stud finder over everywhere that I would expect a joist to be, and it's like there are no joists in this ceiling. Now we're considering the possibility of steel joists, so we're just drilling holes everywhere in the ceiling hoping that we hit something other than sheetrock. I hate to put a bazillion exploratory holes. <laughs> Dude, you look so over this. It's time to hire somebody who knows what they're doing. At this point, we've drilled over 20 holes into the ceiling. My understanding is that the sheetrock is supposed to be attached to the joists and are part of what's holding the entire ceiling up. I swear we've drilled every which way across the ceiling and there are no joists. Clearly there's something else above the sheetrock that we're not seeing. I just called my buddy who works in concrete and has done construction and built houses before, and he agreed that there's gotta be something up there above the sheetrock. Hello. We've decided to take down the ceiling fan so we can see what that's attached to because I'm thinking whatever's strong enough to hold up the ceiling fan will also be strong enough to hold up the dental lamp. There has to be a joist right along here. Because of the way the ceiling fan is mounted, we can't see anything above the sheetrock still. We also drilled every which way around the ceiling fan and still haven't hit any kind of joist. We've decided we're just gonna have to screw it directly into the ceiling. So now we're going back to Lowe's to get some different screws and get a large piece of wood that we can secure to the ceiling so that the weight of the lamp is distributed over a larger surface area. Ideally, we would have used a blocking method, which would have involved putting a piece of wood in between two joists and then securing the dental lamp to that. But obviously we can't do that if we can't even find one joist. Hold screws in your mouth. No, you're slacking, where are my screws? All right, let's do this. You wanna take a first spin? Yeah! Cool. We finally got the lamp secured to the ceiling, so now I just have to install the power pack. This is like Christmas for me, by the way. Like, nothing brings me more joy. I just realized that the holes on the power pack are way too big for the washers that we bought. So now I'm going back to Lowe's again to get new washers and different screws to install the power pack. What a pain in the ass! Alright, moment of truth, we're gonna light it up. The lamp and the power pack are finally installed on the ceiling. Dude, I'm so happy. I can't believe I have a dental light set up. I can't now. begin to explain how excited I am to turn this on and see if it works. I'm so happy right now. I can't believe it works. I've wanted some type of overhead lighting in my operating room for months, and I really feel like this piece of medical equipment is gonna add so much to my videos. And it's definitely one of my most favorite pieces of equipment that I use. It's super handy when I'm operating, especially when it's really dark inside the patient, so I've already featured it in multiple discount dentist episodes. The lamp has also inspired me to create more dental content, so look for more Every Dentist Ever episodes coming soon. Number eight is the heart monitor. When I started the Discount Dentist series, I'd never watched any medical related TV shows, so I didn't have much to go on when it came to building my surgery room. But after a year of doing fruit surgery, my followers convinced me to watch Grey's Anatomy. I honestly didn't think it would be for me, but after the first episode, I was hooked. Now I'm a pretty big fan. I even visited Meredith Grey's house when I visited my family in Seattle this past month. One thing that I noticed right away is not only do heart monitors appear in every episode, but they're also used very strategically to create more tension in the more dramatic scenes, particularly when patients are flatlining. I spent a lot of time researching different monitors and I almost gave up because it didn't seem realistic to get something like this into my home. I knew if I was gonna invest in one, it would have to be in my budget. But I also knew I'd have to spend a decent amount to make it worth it, because I wanted to make sure I could find one that would have enough information appearing on the screen to make it look cool in my videos. I finally found the perfect one and I bought it for myself for Christmas in December of 2021. I can actually check the security camera. Looks like it's actually just FedEx at the door. My heart monitor has arrived, I'm gonna go get it. Bye. The heart monitor has arrived. I'm performing emergency surgery on this box immediately. Second box. This must be all the cables. I just accidentally turned it on. It's flatlined. It's because no one's hooked up to it yet. More instructions. Is this receipt paper? There's plastic and styrofoam everywhere, but I finally got the monitor set up. Since then, the monitor has appeared in countless episodes, and I also felt like it completed my operating room enough that I felt comfortable shifting from a green screen background to a real background, which is a shift you'll notice if you watch closely between episodes 212 and 213. Number seven on my list is, of course, the defibrillator. Clear! 
This is a real defibrillator that I got on eBay. But unlike the heart monitor and the dental lamp, if I plug this one in, it doesn't work. These machines honestly freak me out a little bit. So I intentionally looked for one on eBay that was selling for parts only. Because I was afraid if I turned it on, I might shock myself. The company I bought this from emailed me before they shipped it and offered to send a brand new one. But I decided that I had no reason to order a real defibrillator. And I didn't want to risk accidentally electrocuting myself. The original idea of this series is that I was a discount dentist. So I would perform procedures using discount or household items, such as thumbtacks as dental implants. My first defibrillator was a couple of quarters wrapped in tin foil with a wire sticking out of them. And then I started using spoons for the defibrillator and people thought that was really funny. But as I continued to upgrade my surgery space, I really wanted to get a real defibrillator. I realized that having all this realistic medical gear kind of takes away from the idea of being a discount dentist. But I also feel like I made a ton of these videos and it was time to start upgrading them a little bit. I also purchased this baby defibrillator for some of my smaller patients. Clear. Let me know in the comments if you guys think I should continue upgrading my medical equipment or if you'd rather see me using household items to stay true to the original concept of being a discount dentist. Receipt paper? Pretty sure this is one machine that you don't want to be getting a receipt from. This might seem insignificant, but this is the prop that actually took my videos to the next level while I was still living in Georgia. I actually bought the chirogenic apron for some liquid nitrogen videos that I was filming at the time, but then I realized this looked way more like surgical drapes than the blue towels that I'd been using up to that point. When I started filming surgeries using this apron as the background for the patient, something about the texture of the apron just made the videos more satisfying. Number six on my list is scalpels. What can I say about this one? Without them, how would I operate? With that said, keep an eye out for some upcoming videos where I'm gonna perform surgeries without a scalpel. Here's another one I get asked about a ton. What do I use for fake blood in my videos and why does it change color? When I started these videos, it was all about making the surgeries look as realistic as possible. So I used red vampire blood that I got on Amazon and I've actually made a couple videos about this in the past. However, as TikTok's community guidelines got stricter and some of my videos using the red blood started getting restricted, I began to look for alternatives. Since then, I've actually been mixing food coloring into this thickened water. I don't fully know why thick water exists, but my understanding is that it's created for people who have certain medical conditions. It's worked great for me because it has the same consistency as blood and it's how I've been able to make so many different videos with different colored blood. A lot of viewers have expressed that they prefer the videos with the red blood, but any video that I create for YouTube shorts that's also gonna be posted on TikTok is gonna continue to have blue or green blood. I do still continue to use the red blood in my extended surgery videos on YouTube and in my medical ASMR videos that you can find on Snapchat Discover. Number four is needles. And for the longest time, I reused the same package of syringes that I'd bought in Georgia to reduce waste. Number three is the shark costume. The dancing shark videos have recently become a big hit on my channel, but I originally purchased the dancing shark costume for a video that I haven't even made yet. I love making themed surgery videos, which means making surgery videos that are inspired by recent TV shows or popular music. And the shark costume was bought for a California girl's surgery that I still haven't created yet. My friend ended up getting his hands on the shark costume before I had time to make that video, which is how the Dancing Shark series began. And it's likely that you'll continue to see a lot more dancing sharks on my channel. Number two is iodine, but it's not just any iodine bottle. This one's getting almost the highest ranking because I managed to use this single bottle of iodine for the first 200 episodes of the Discount Dentist series. First appeared in episode 36. Prior to that, I had been using iodine swabs, which can be seen in episode 33. And I still love using the swabs, but I felt like I was going through them faster and it seemed more wasteful than just buying a bottle. Number one on my list is of course the teeth. Out of all the questions I see on my channel, by far the most common is where does he get the teeth? After episode eight of the Discount Dentist series, I made a silly video showing the top secret location that I get the teeth from, my mailbox. And no, the teeth are of course not from real humans, at least as far as I know. These teeth are made out of resin, but I love how realistic they look. Finding the perfect teeth for my videos was really important to me because it was what set my videos apart from other fruit surgery videos on the internet. Fruit surgery is not something I invented, it's been around on the internet for years, but I noticed that no one had ever done dental or orthodontic procedures on fruits or veggies. I wondered why at first, but realized it's because they don't have teeth, so it would be really hard to do those types of procedures. But this led me to the realization that if I could find a way to implant full sets of teeth on my patients, I would be able to create a fun dental and orthodontic series. Thanks to these realistic looking resin teeth, the Discount Dentist series was born, and from there it's evolved into an emergency surgery series. I still really enjoy creating dental related videos and do orthodontic procedures as often as I can too. I think the videos where I put braces on my patients have been some of the most satisfying. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy these videos, don't forget to hit the notification bell and leave a comment below with any other questions that you have about my videos. I do my best to go through as many comments as I can to answer your questions when I have free time. Here's some other places you can connect with me. Search for Fleeting Films on TikTok and also add me on Instagram, which is the best place to get updates about upcoming videos and new content that I've created. You can also watch extended surgery videos on Snapchat Discover. I currently have two shows on Snapchat. One is called Discount Dentist and the other is called Medical ASMR. You can search for either of those right now in the Snapchat app, and I'm looking forward to launching a third Snapchat show later next year. Thanks again for your continued support. I always enjoy reading your brilliant surgery suggestions, so always feel free to leave me comments with any of your new ideas.